Hey guys, today I have a really special guest, Coach Kelsey. <laughs> and Kelsey, tell us what do you do and who do you help? I am a online nutrition coach. Um, I help women 30 to 55, basically guide them through the mumbo jumbo uh, of nutrition. And I work via through nutrition, mindset, hormones, lifestyle, coaching. Uh, so basically that, no meal plans, templates, it's all customized nutrition uh, coaching, just online. Awesome. Awesome. And I've been, I've met Kelsey in person. So we are, we're real friends, but <laughs> I spoke with her on social media because we don't live in the same town. And I really like the information she's sharing. Someone in the industry, my niche is not nutrition. It's not lifestyle coaching. It's also not fat loss. Those are the people I don't work with. So the information that Kelsey shares is definitely out of my wheelhouse and I really like lately she's been talking a lot about the relationship with food or people's relationship with food and I want you to kind of dig in or dive into that what is the difference between changing someone's relationship with food versus just giving someone a meal plan because it's very popular to go on a 30-day sugar detox or 30-day gluten-free like why <laughs> Why is it better to change the relationship with food versus just going on a certain diet? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly right, right there where you said at the end, a certain diet. Because that doesn't stick. And, and most of the time when, when women come to me, they, they come to me because they, they've tried it all, right? We've all tried it all. We, we've done this. We, uh, we've done the diets. We've been told we should be doing uh, a certain diet plan we've been told that we need to aim for perfect and that's what's going to get results we live in a world that that rules around food are at an all-time high you can go keto says carbs are bad uh intermittent fasting has this rule paleo doesn't really like the the bean world like you have to be careful on all that the nightshades like there's all these things hell even fruit has fructose so now sugar and, and women come to me they're like is fruit bad i'm like are you serious? Like what is happening? So information overload is where it begins. And so my job with working with a woman that comes to me or a man that comes to me that, that kind of is lost and has no idea really where even to begin, we back it up and I, and we figure out why, why number one, they want to do this building self-awareness around why they do what they do. Because even if I gave them the meal plan, they've, they've done that before. They, most of the time, I mean, we can all go on Google and find a meal plan right now that works for us, right? But we, we almost need to have, okay, why am I doing this? Because if I gave them a meal plan, it's another, it's another person telling them they should be doing something. Mm -hmm. and, and I can beat them to death with kale is going to be great, but if in their mind they don't believe that, they're not going to stick with it. So we back it up. We dive deep down into self-awareness. We journal our food. Um, we even, you know, there's no really, my, my tagline is no food left behind. So even when you have the spaghetti, even when you have the pizza, that, that is okay. It's just mindfully eating. It's your relationship around that. Like, how did it make you feel? Those are the things that really not only help you now, but they're going to be lasting because the meal plans, the templates and the challenges, it's great for 30 days, but then what? Most of the time they don't know why they did what they did or even how they did what they did. They just followed a piece of paper. And, and now when real life happens, it kind of goes wayside. So really it comes down to being self-aware, understanding what works for your body and and going on with that, not, not the should, because we should all be doing a lot of things, but we're not. And there's a reason why we're not. And it's, and it's because we don't know why or how, and that's, that's kind of how I connect. I connect people and I connect people with each other. And, and that builds a community of, you know, a tribe of rock stars in and out of the kitchen. Nice. And what are a few things, what are a few negative things that you see happen when people do follow a certain meal plan because it seems like what you're doing is you're almost helping people figure out what they can eat and when they figure it out on their own there's almost a sense of ownership of 
this is my way of eating. And when there's a sense of ownership, it's easier to stick to it instead mm -hmm. of, like you said, someone just giving them another meal plan. Like what yeah. happening? Like what do you see happening when people just follow a book or a plan or a diet? Most of the time they come to me and they'll, they tell me it works and, but they're still talking to me on the phone. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so if it works, you know, what, what was missing from that? And then, and then they go on and tell me, well, you know, at the 30 days, I, I just couldn't stick with anymore. Mm. It was too hard. It was too challenging. I couldn't go out to eat with my family without feeling guilty. I couldn't go to the birthday party that my kid had and not feel like I just wanted to throw my face in the cake because I haven't had something that I enjoy in 30 days. I've cut everything out. I don't even know what to eat anymore. Like those, that's literally probably all the phone calls that I get. That was just like stuff that I, I hear in my head from other people. Like that, those are the things that comes, and that goes back to relationship with food. Now, now they go out to eat and they have no idea what to do. I'm like what? You were just eating probably really well on your plan, but you were just following this piece of paper, right? Never like in your mind, you're, we are so smart. We're, we're adults. Like we have brains. We need to use them, but we're so brainwashed with the information overload that it's just like a fog. It's like, I don't even know if kale is good for me anymore. Like it used to heal cancer. That was the thing in like 2008. It was like the superfood. And now there's all these bu buzzwords that throws everything off. And so some of the, basically the negative effects of that are you can't, you can't understand what works for your body anymore. You can't do all the things that you want to do, like based on outings and just eating like right, not even right, but just eating, just knowing how to eat anymore. Um, and then fat gain back with vengeance. That's the big thing. It's like, I'm, I'm on the phone with you. Why, why are you, what, what was not working for you? Well, I'm about 10 pounds heavier than I was before the challenge. Yeah, the so challenge is over. It's just not sustainable. And people just yeah. keep going through different, yep. different diet every, like every six months. Yeah, the average person I think diets four times a year. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> That's it's not sustainable. And I know me and you are huge fans of trying to help our clients have results that they can sustain instead of going back and forth. Me with the lifting, making sure they can lift for a while without getting injured and making it sustainable. And then for you, it's making lifestyle choices sustainable that they don't have to feel like they're being controlled 24 seven, things that yeah. become easier. So with that said, what are a few basic things you start people with? Mm -hmm. Because I know it's not just diet. I know you work a lot on sleep. So like, what are a few things that you help your clients do in the beginning? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and that it, it blows my mind how that a meal plan is offered to so many people because I've never had a person start that I gave them the same focus or the same habit from day one. Never have I had a repeatable one. Um, so everyone's so different, but if I could put it in a bottle and kind of like pick some out, like for an example, if I, if I wanted to start a client with eating breakfast because she realizes that around 12 o'clock she becomes starving or around two o'clock she has mega cravings, we jump back to breakfast. But then I have to ask her, you know, what does your morning routine look like? And so this one client actually about two weeks ago, we were having this conversation and I was, she was like, well, I'm always late for work. I work out about seven 30 or I mean, I get home about seven 30 and I work at nine. So I have about an hour and a half and I can't seem to find time for breakfast. And I'm thinking in my head, what is this woman doing for an hour and a half that her commutes like two minutes to work. And so we realized that she stares at her closet for about 20 minutes, figuring out what she wants to wear. So she lost about 20 minutes of time in her day that already put her behind for the, the entire day to make her feel flustered and overwhelmed and filled with anxiety. So now we go back to the nighttime routine. She set, number one, she set a bedtime. She puts out her clothes before bed. So she, number one, has clothes for working out, but also has clothes when she gets home from working out right, out, right outside of her shower. So now she's crushing breakfast. She's going to bed around nine o'clock instead of midnight because she is thinking, how the hell am I going to do life tomorrow with already being behind? 
And then she's eating breakfast, so she has energy around 2 o'clock again, and her cravings are gone. So that's just one example. Another example would be, um, like for my advanced athletes, I would say like protein per meal, but that's kind of like the boring stuff. That's not the sexy stuff. That's the, or that is the sexy stuff in, in the nutrition world. But I like to dive into the unsexy stuff. So even time blocking your day, just like with her, that's what we did is we, or even at another point, we, we backed up her day. She realized that she wastes a lot of time when her kids are at school from 10 to three. And so now she's, you know, cleaning the house at, at one time. She's meal prepping at, at between two and three. Like she's actually spending focused, intentional moments in, in that. Because what she found out she was doing with the experiment was scrolling, hmm. social media, Facebook. And I'm like, and, and what has this done for you? Like, are you happy? Like, no, you're, you're, you're frustrated with your results because you see others. You're, you're just mindlessly sitting on the couch probably – sucking on dum-dums like all of these things are, are not adding up to what she wanted as far as results and um, energy so time blocking and, and that's just an experiment that anyone can do anyone can do that right now for three days wake up in the morning either on your phone or better yet not on your phone so you don't have to go on your phone just on a piece of paper literally write out when do you brush your teeth when do you grab your phone when do you click facebook when do you watch tv when do you go for a walk you know, and then you can kind of see in your day where time is wasted. And that's just, that's a fundamental. If you don't have time to, you know, meal prep in the kitchen, why is that? And we got to back it up and really dig into like, what is going on? Self-awareness. Where are you in the day? Are you online? Are you, are you here? You know? So, so that's, yeah, just you know, individualized, but still there are some basics, time blocking, water, or advanced athletes would be carbohydrates. I work with a lot of women that fear carbs, that do strength training, that don't get results and that have plummeted hormones. So, so that's another one as well, but basic, basic that it kind of in a bottle. So you help them basically prioritize their day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because if they don't, if, you know, if they don't prioritize their day, they're definitely not prioritizing themselves. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing is once we can do that, they're, they're more eligible to change. When they, first step to change is awareness. And if they don't have that within themselves, I can't do anything. Nobody can. A meal plan won't help you. No, a magic pill won't help you. A cleanse won't help you. Nothing until you dig, in, dig into yourself. Yeah. And how many people do you uh, talk to a lot about sleep? Like, is that, mm -hmm. is that one of the big, is that a big priority priority for you and your clients? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So my pillars to health are nutrition, sleep, movement, hormones, and mindset. All of those things come together. But if we can't, we don't, I don't necessarily focus on all together, but sleep is huge. I mean, for my, even for myself, if I'm sleep deprived, I notice that my cravings are up. I notice that I'm moody. I'm irritable. Same thing with my clients. They come to me. They're like, gosh, I'm, I'm so stressed out this week. And I'm, you know, I'm not satisfied. I'm going to bed hungry. I'm, I'm irritable. I'm in a funk mood and I'm, and I'm holding on water weight. They're like, I feel kind of puffy. I don't feel good. Like with my fat loss clients, it's huge. I mean, it's the number probably the number one, if we dial that in, everything falls into place. But everyone, you know, too, they're like, there's a lot of excuses around sleep, I found, especially with, with women. It's like, that, I feel like that's the only thing we really can control. And it, but it, for, for a lot of people, it's not, which, which is okay. But we go back to the time blocking. It's like, why can we not? Like, why do you still have to feel like you have to do things at 9 to 10 o'clock at night? What are you missing the other 12 hours that you're probably up? Can you wake up 30 minutes earlier and go to bed 30 minutes earlier just to get a little bit of extra time? Um, but absolutely, sleep is huge. So blue blocking, um, white noise in the, in the bedroom, no social media, that's a huge thing. So even on your iPhone, you can set like screen time. And so I, for myself, I have my apps blocked from seven to seven, I think is what it is. And that's, and that's really helpful for myself. It's a thing that I struggle with too. I mean, I do online coaching, I'm, I'm online. So feeling like I need to plug in is, is a struggle. And I know that for other women too, especially if you're single or have kids, you feel like you need to be, it's FOMO, fear of missing out. 
We do. That's not going to help you get results. I'm going to steal the whole prioritizing with, because we, we do try to get our, all our clients to sleep. We do yes. weekly challenges. And a lot of yes. the times is it's anything about sleep, just because if people were sleeping better, then maybe the food choices would be a little easier there. And I feel like it's almost like fighting an uphill battle, trying to fix what you're eating when you are not prioritizing sleep at all. And absolutely. No, it's absolutely. So I'm going to take that from you to see, like maybe people are wasting time in the morning when they could go to sleep early or, you know, middle of the day and they actually could go to sleep a little earlier if they stop. Yeah. It's like fair enough, you know, why, why, why do you feel like you have so many things to do at night? What is happening the other hours? Mm -hmm. And you're exactly right. You're going to like the cravings, the not feeling energized. You don't want healthy food. You want highly palatable sugar things that the brain wants. Like it's just science. <laughs> You, you cannot bite that, fight that battle. It's going to, and it's going to be a lot harder than this. We, it, you know, it's, it, it really is simple, but you've, you've kind of got to do some dirty work to get there. Yeah. And what kind of, with your, you have five pillars. Is that what you said? Yep. Wow. Uh, what kind of results are you seeing with your clients? Cause it's not just fat loss. I know you put a lot on even blood work. So what kind of things are you seeing when you work on these fundamental habits? Yeah. Wonderful. Um, a few, so back blood work, I had one client, uh, amazing. I worked with her about when mm, she lost about 30 pounds, like a week ago is her 30 pound mark, a uh, huge lower inflammation. I've been working her for seven months, uh, lower HDL, uh, about like 70 points. She has, she still has a little bit of inflammation, but the biggest thing for her was sleep, sugar, and real food. That's it. That's the only thing that she really focused on. And once she dialed those things in, it kind of all started to place. And it became easy for her. And it became something that she can stick with and consistently. Like, she was a major, major struggle with weekends. Like, hard, hardcore. She, around our town, is very fun, live music, drinks, and everything. And she found a way not to, I don't really like this kind of word, but no excuses. You know, she, she still went out with her family and her friends, but she made the choice to just have one drink instead of five. She made the choice to be in bed at least by nine. Like she, her and her husband kind of came up with this agreement. That was, that was not necessarily a rule, but that was what worked best for them. Yeah. And in the whole process, he also lost weight and felt a lot better. So overall, that's number one. And Past week on my private Facebook group that I have with my clients, a lady shared that her favorite food is Italian food. She came from a bodybuilding background. Chicken, broccoli, and rice is all she knows. Her scale is basically her Bible. She lives and breathes by it. First, um, first consult call that we had, she put her scale in her hallway. Second call that we had, and she never got on it again in an entire month. Second call that she had, she made, or actually she posted on her Facebook group, she made spaghetti for her family and she didn't feel like it was a cheat meal. Because when she would have a cheat meal, the connotation would be around that, you know, she can't just have one serving. You're not going to have a cheat meal of, of spaghetti and have, you know, your palm size and, and carbs and all of that. That's, that's not a cheat meal. So she took that word out of her vocabulary and she, she's been focusing on her mindset and her relationship with food. And she said, I enjoyed spaghetti for the first time in a good portion with my family, and I didn't feel guilty about it. Hmm. And that's her favorite food. It's like, so you've been for, she's 55, so you've been eating without some of your favorite foods for about 10 years, and every time that you have it, you feel guilty? That's crazy. And now, it's, you know, working on that stuff, she's, she's changed that. Um, fat loss, of course, I've, a lot of my athlete clients that, that lift heavy, um, that do high intensity exercise, I basically just do a reverse diet on them and they eat more than they ever have and, and get the best results they ever have. So it's really a big spectrum of kind of, you know, where people are struggling. All or nothing approach, I think that's the biggest um, the similarity with all of them is, is they come from all, all of these rules and this information overload and unsure of what to do. So breaking it down, starting with the self-awareness, starting with sleep, uh, hormones is, is big for my clients and that goes hand in hand with, um, nutrition. So everything, uh, kind of falls in a place together wherever, wherever they struggle the most. I don't necessarily start there, 
I don't always want to move the biggest rock. That's always the harder one. But we start with the little ones and it kind of all goes together and falls nicely for them. That's awesome. Yeah. So you work with people online and how could you supplement a trainer? Because if they're only coaching, you know, yeah. some people really need that other piece. They need that extra help. Um, how can you supplement that for them since you work with people online? So really almost anyone could work with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, first, first step is I want to get on a call. So I, I want to get on a brainstorming call to learn more about the client, uh, see where their struggles are, tell them about my programs and then see if they'd be a good fit. I, the main thing that I try to build is connection. Like, can I connect with you? Can I actually help you? Like it is my duty to help women and men and, but I can't, I, I don't, I don't vibe with everybody. Something that I say and maybe something that you say would, would be totally different and somebody's going to connect, with, not probably not with both of us. So I want to make sure that anyone that I bring in my group is, is my ideal client. And, and so I want to dig into that and make sure that I understand that their fears, struggles, and frustrations just as well as they do, because then I'm going to be better suited to help them. Um, and so once we get on a call, tell them about my program, see if it's a good fit. And then depending on the accountability and support that they need, uh, that's where we roll from there. So I offer biweekly coaching calls. We have weekly check-ins, um, daily communication, if that's something that you need, if you need more handholding. Um, and, and everything like that. So it really comes down to support, accountability, and, and really what you need. But ultimately, my goal, if I do my job well and they do their job well, I don't want to work with clients forever. I'm a big believer and I'll provide you the knowledge and I'll also give you the application. So once you have those two together, you can do it on your own. And you don't have to go to this other diet. You don't have to go to this other thing because you have finally found something that is molded and that's evolved for you. If you still need the accountability piece, I, I offer that program, but I don't, I don't want to have clients forever. <laughs> I want to build enough people that can go and do it for other people. I want to, I want to build rock stars in and out of the kitchen that can be motivators and, and inspirers and leaders for their family, for their friends. And then if they need help, then they can come to me. But the more that I can build people up, the more we're going to kind of bat this food food freedom, this restrictive dieting world um, that's kind of been ruining the fitness and health industry. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a trainer and you're watching this, if you have clients where you know they have a horrible relationship with food and especially women who even are under eating and they believe like that's the only way that they get to stay small is if they restrict calories and it's just to me, that's way out of my scope because that, to me, that's a horrible relationship with food. It's more than just work on your sleep and, you know, cut down on some sugar because some people don't need the hand holding. Some people need something else, but there are a lot of people that really need to change the relationship and need to have someone to guide them and take them to the right direction because there's so much information. Like you said, information overload. Um, but if you're a trainer, cause I know you started with coaching, like coaching exercises and movement where if someone wants to learn and take their career more towards what you're doing, like, where should they go? Where have you gone? Where have I gone? <laughs> I've got my hands kinds of things, but, um, precision nutrition is, is the baseline. That's the foundation. Uh, I'm, I'm also blending that with habit change great book motivational interviewing for clients that that you can't get them to change uh, another recommendation nci so with jason phillips leading the pack on that that's a nutrition institute that is amazing and really really dials in the lifestyle and more of the reverse dieting so anyone that is struggling with not eating enough it, it goes into the science that's where my hormone education comes from yeah. even a little bit of my mindset education those are my resources but any book that you can get a handle on um what it who is it the uh gut health john rushi all of those are huge so 
that's that's where I would I would start there. And honestly, it's it's if it's your duty and you feel like that's your calling and you need to help people, put out free content. That's number one. There's never enough. There's enough content, but you also need to see show them why what the problem is, how to, how you're going to help them. Like why do they need you? And blending that together because we can all give out free content, but we need to at one point let it's selfish if we don't tell them they need us. So, so you need to be, you know, a go-getter and, and giving your gift away is, is not a bad thing. Awesome. Great answers. Well, well, thank you, Kelsey. And I will link everything below everything that you shared and I will, uh, where can people find you? They can find me at Kelsey Flanagan Instagram. Yes. Awesome. The Holistic Fitness Connector! <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. <laughs>